this bike is good for anyone, not just dads. Hey, bike farmers, thanks for clicking in. We got ourselves a bona fide dad bike here. These are some of my very favorite bikes to get in on trade. They sell super quick. It's just a great general purpose bike. It's like a 2000s era Trek 7200. They come with a suspension fork that kind of softens up the front end. Suspension seat post here that softens up the rear end a little bit. This one ha happens to have a huge saddle that I'm actually gonna swap out for something a little more reasonable. Hybrid wheels. They were called hybrids for so long, I just call them hybrids now, you know? It's just a good old fashioned comfort bike, perfect for riding around, getting out on the bike trail. You can go fast on them, you can go slow on them. You can haul the kids around, you can use it as a grocery getter. Not only that, the best part is they say Trek on the side. Anything that says Trek on the side sells quick and sells for more. So these are perfect bikes to flip. You can find them at garage sales all the time. I am going to show you what I look for when I bring them in on trade-in to see what's gonna cost me money and how hard it is to fix and what we're gonna do about it. I think this is gonna be a great bike, so let's get started. The very first thing I look for is the rear tire and brake pads. So the rear tire is always gonna be in worse shape than the front. And, you know, the first thing you can kind of notice is it still has its whiskers. But I'm looking at the center of the tire here for any inconsistencies. And this one appears to have none. So very light use on this bike. And I can kind of tell too by a few other things. There's a little bit of mud over here. This little bit of gunk is this bike was only ridden once after it was cleaned or only ridden once when it was wet outside, but it wasn't ridden a whole lot more than once. Um, you can kind of look here where the dust builds up and behind the brake. And it just, I think it had a few rides out on the, um, out on the crushed limestone gravel bike path. And that's about it. These brake pads are um, just about brand new. So there's nothing to worry about there. So I don't really need to check the chain because I just know that this bike hasn't been ridden much, but we'll do that anyway. So to check the chain, we use a chain checker. I like these Park Tool ones. They have two settings. They've got 0.5 and 0.75. So 0.5 will show you when it's starting to stretch. Basically you hook one side in to a link over there and then another one, you let it drop down in there, and if it drops all the way in, oh, which it did, look at that. Imagine that, maybe this bike has been ridden. Um, you know it's just starting to wear out, but not in need of replacement. And then the other side is 0.75, and that's the one where if it drops down, then you know all the bushings are worn out and you wanna replace it. So this one is good to go. And this, as you can tell, it's not dirty or anything, so it'll lube right up, be good as new. So I generally feel the bottom bracket in a couple of spots just to see if it needs replacing, and this one doesn't. And by what I'm doing is just in and out on the, um, in a few different spots with the crank arms. Um, and I'll do the same thing with the, the wheels, just back and forth, so I'm going this way with them just to feel if there's any play in the bearings, any play in the hub bearings. And then you can check your front pads too. They're good to go. And then if you just kind of grab the handlebars and go side to side, you can feel the headset. I can feel it just needs adjusting, but it's nice and smooth. And then I just kind of look at a general condition. Is there a lot of rust? Has it been outside? And this one has not. Um, the saddle isn't ripped, so I don't need to replace it, although I will. But those are the things I look for on the bikes that I flip. Tires are expensive, so that's a biggie, as if it needs tires or not. Bottom bracket is labor intensive. It takes longer to tune up. And then uh, general rust to see if you've got to replace cables and that kind of thing, and check the chain. So, you know, if the chain is stretched, then it's a chain and cassette. That's expensive, too. So there's what I do. Let's get started on this tune-up. So I like to put air in the tires in the beginning just to see if they've lost any air through the tune-up. 
This one, I just happen to know this bike has been sitting around a while and the tires are holding air, so I'm not too concerned, but just throw a little air in there. Make them firm, that's good enough. There we go. So then I take both shifters, I put the chain in the little and the little, and I pop the wheels off. So then you can take the rear derailleur and push it in like that, which creates enough slack in this cable that you can just pop the housing out like that. Do that all the way up. And then if you're lucky, you can do the same thing by holding the front derailleur out, disconnecting that piece, doing the same thing. And your rear brakes are ready. Done. So now all your cables are loose on that bike. You have really good access to the frame this way for polishing and cleaning, and you can lube all your cables. So for the lubing of the cables, I use a little bottle of TriFlow, and I just, I let gravity help me out here. And I just kind of squirt a little on the cable. Let gravity pull it in, or I can you know, you can take your cable housing way down like that. Just a couple drops is really all you need. A little dab will do ya. Okay, so I just did both of the shifters, the fronts. Here's the rear brake cable. This is something that I, I noticed right away. But right in here you can see how there's kind of like this white film. And if I just rub it a little bit, it turns darker. That's like old dry lube. So it's not rust or anything, but if you put the tri-flow on there, it makes it dark, right? And now it's re-lubricated. So that's basically what we're doing. It's just a nice visual aid to kind of show you. You know, when it gets dried out inside the housing, it's just a lot more friction. And uh, you know, then the brakes don't feel snappy. And I like everything feeling snappy. So just anywhere that, I mean, you can lube the whole cable if you want, but I focus on where, where the housing goes. This is probably the most important part of the rear derailleur system. This back loop, that's where the most friction is. So just really make sure you get that lubed. And same thing with the front is, you know, you're kind of making a right angle there. These bikes are really well designed as far as the cable routings. They always tune right up. The front brake, cable is always a little different. It's harder to get access to the cable. I don't know, how do you say that? So it's pretty much all gravity at this point. And then don't forget to lube your noodle. It's also a spot where the cable dries out and a lot of friction builds up is right here in the, in the noodle zone. And then this bike is just dusty. It's not greasy. The greasy bike I'll hit with Dawn Power Wash first because it's a light degreaser. It's like doing the dishes. And then, uh, but with a dusty bike, I just go straight with the furniture polish. I use Behold because that's what my grocery store has. It's the cheapest stuff. I've found that the cheaper, the better. You don't need to buy the expensive stuff. But just spray everything down. I don't worry about it getting on the brake pads. It all wipes off. And then first time you use the brakes, it burns off, so. Just get it everywhere. I, uh, I really get a lot down in the nether regions because that tends to be a filthy part. But you do that, then you go through with a rag and wipe it all off. And you got yourself a clean bike. Hey bike farmers, I just wanted to take this lull in the action to let you know how much I appreciate that you've clicked in to watch this video. Now that I've been at it a little bit, I'm starting to learn why everybody's always asking for more. The AdSense money is just barely enough to make it worth starting a channel. If I wanna sustain this for the long term, I'm gonna need everyone's help. Now don't get me wrong, your attention is enough. Don't feel obligated to give more, but I've tried to make it as easy as possible. You can always click the super thanks, that's the heart with the dollar sign in the middle of it, or consider a monthly membership. 
The monthly membership will give you a little star next to your name. And if you have any questions, you can ask them in the comments. I'll see the star. And when I see it, I'll definitely give you an answer. You'll also have access to a little more behind the scenes action that non-members can't see. With all that said, thank you so much. And let's get back to some bikes. Okie dokes, folks. We'll get uh, our cables hooked back up here. There we go. So this I'm hitting with some power wash just because it's a little greasier down in here. A little dirtier rag. Get that polished up nice and clean. A lot of this reconditioning of bikes to flip them is, you know, just making them look good. You know, nobody wants to buy a filthy bike Mechanically, a filthy bike could be working just as good as a clean one, but especially, you know, I'm, I'm doing this out of a shop. It's guaranteed, you know, I want to have a good reputation, or, you know, give the impression that I care. That's all important. I take my cleaner rag and just kind of take up some of the residue. And I'm always kind of rubbing as I go. Yeah, these bikes are just Really great. My favorite flippers. Here we got ourselves a pretty filthy hub. Dawn power wash. Sometimes just to get at the, get in the spokes and stuff, I'll get the brush out and hit that. That's the hard part to clean right there. I do this to just about every bike I tune up. I don't think a lot of people do. This is how I do it. This is how I've been doing it. But I, I look, when I look at bikes, I look at the hubs and see how dirty they are. I don't know. It's just how I do it to see if anybody's ever cared. If you've cared enough to clean the hubs, you know, and I wipe down every spoke. Again, this is a this is a tack cloth at this point. It's got a bunch of Dawn Power Wash and Behold on it. It's damp. It's got some good filth. To, filth likes to attract filth, you know. Look no further than Washington D.C. This is another one of my techniques here. Go through one by one. It's like flossing your teeth, folks. Get in between each one and then go on either side. And if you take a somewhat cleaner egg, you don't need much, just a little bit. So a lot of times when you clean the rims like this, um, it makes the braking surface too smooth and you get howling brakes at the end. But that's pretty easy to fix with some emery cloth. Just rough them up a little bit. Okay, I can still see some grunge on the other side of this hub. Reach in there again and help it out from the other way. So while I have it in the stand, I should probably true it. We'll just use this side for now for demonstration. Yeah. So I'm going to loosen this spoke. So you loosen the spokes on the side that it's touching and then tighten the ones on the opposite side. This rim has like a little bit of a, a bump in it, like a bend. Um, it took a hit at some point, so we're never going to get this one 
really good and true. So I just use an old spoke to hold this side of the, the gauge over. So I can, I true from both sides of the rim. I think everybody does, I don't know. I guess I haven't watched anybody true a wheel in a very, very long time. But I was taught to go back and forth. And it's the way I do it, it works pretty good. So this is just kind of a normal spot, but then there's right there. Yeah, you can see there's a dent in the rim. It's actually right at the seam. So you can push the reflector out of the way. Yeah, this is a tricky one. And it's very temperamental. I'm getting there. Yeah, so this spoke is really loose. And so you'll find, you'll get to a point where, you know, this one's loose and this one's tight. So it's gonna be as good as it gets. There's just no more adjustability. But we should be able to get it so it doesn't rub and you won't feel it when you're braking. It's nothing too serious. Not in need of replacement or any kind of expensive fix. Good enough for who it's for. Okay. Always look for a good reason to sit down on Woody Charlson. Some of the regular viewers understand the story of Woody Charlson. Right. A little bit of filth there. That one's broken, it's a three pronger. Three pronger means it's a 36 hole wheel, 36 spoked wheel, 36 hole rim. You know, wiping as we go. There's a joke in there somewhere. Wiping as we go, just like uh, day after hitting the burrito house. Okay. So this is not my usual angle on things, but these are keyed. There's the little guy there, and then the little guy's there. So you gotta line up the little guys. This is a great tool if you do this a lot. Park Tool FR 5.2. That looks way nicer. Same story with the front wheel. We're just gonna clean her up and check it for true. Needs a little bit of a touch up, so we're just gonna hit it with behold. Let her rip. See you on the flip side. Hey bike farmers, a quick note. If you're looking to get serious about fixing bikes at home, look no further than the Park Tool AK5 Toolkit. I have an affiliate link in the description. This kit provides all the basic tools you'll need to tune up just about any of the bikes that you see on this channel. It also comes with the big blue book of bicycle repair written by Calvin over at Park Tool. Also in the description are affiliate links for all the basic things that I use. The grease, the degreaser, the one step, the Dawn power wash, we hold. If you see anything else that I don't already have a link for, let me know in the comments so I can add it. I hope these affiliate links will help encourage you to take this on as a hobby or even start flipping bikes for a living like I do. I think I just finished up this wheel. Okay, back up on the stand. We're gonna turn it back into a bicycle. I do this without even thinking, but I put my thumb here and then my finger straight out and I hold this doohickey. Then I grab this thingamajob and I pull the works towards me, it goes right in. Every time, needs some adjustment, but that's pretty good. Feels very 
um, tuned up already. I like that. I like it when it comes together. Same thing back here. Get that out of the way. Doohickey, thingamajobber, mamma jamma. See how that one feels. Not quite as balanced as the front. Good spot to drop lube on brakes is right behind this washer. And then right there. Do that to both sides. Right behind the washer. And right there. Gravity's gonna pull it down, then you can kind of wiggle it like that. And then work your lever and wiggle it. Give it some chaos. All right, just let the lube work its way into the system. And then, these are the tension screws. I'm gonna bring the whole system over this way a little bit. It's still pulling mostly from that side. So I'm gonna just double check to make sure I got the wheel in straight. I'm gonna take a little tension off of this side. Sometimes that's a better adjustment than adding tension. I'm gonna add a little. These old Promax, Promax brakes are better than you'd think. Okay, so that was a little too much. Um, it gets to a point where you just make subtle adjustments and they make quite a bit of difference. Ooh, there it is. When you get it, you find it, you know it. Yeah. Ooh. So this guy, there's, it's uh, just loose. The, the brake feels loose. It's got really good tension. It's got an amazing feel but it's loose, so we're gonna tighten the cable a bit, loosen the anchor, and pull it through, and that's pulled through tight. I'm just gonna back it off a smidge. I feel like that was too much. Okay, well, maybe it was good. Back it off a smidge, there we go. Okay, and I'm not like tightening it down a ton, I want to be able to make micro adjustments as I go. Oop, there it is. I know, you're all doing it, aren't you? Oop, there. There it is. What a stupid song that was. Man. Oop, there it is. Oop, there it is. Somebody's got to do a polka version. Oh, there it is. God, I'm already, I'm thinking about my next YouTube channel. It's gonna start with that video. Oh, there it is. This bicycle is damn gorgeous. And this cage is hideous. It's gotta go. I, am, I haven't figured out yet if like keeping the bottle cages on the bikes helps them sell or if taking them off and then giving them one for free makes it feel like I'm giving the customer something for free. But most of the time, I take them off. Then you can get things really clean too. These bolts are a little rusty. I should just be able to clean them up with some steel wool. There we go. I do things left-handed a lot when I'm filming. That looks better. And then I always put a drop of tri-flow in the bolt heads. Something I learned at Budget Bicycle Center many years ago where I learned how to do this. Okay. Tri-flow aerosol.
You don't need to use the aerosol, but I do. And then, if I use it to clean the chain, I go one way and grab down here. I go the other way. And I shift it up and I floss. That's good stuff right there. See how she shifts back down now. Flawless. Oh. Oh, okay. So, cable's just a little loose. Oh yeah, you can see it. It's a little loose. So that's what the barrel adjuster's for. You can see it's just poking its head out there. We can give it a turn or two here. And then what it does is it makes the, essentially it's lengthening this piece of housing, which will tighten the cable. So it's lefty loosey, but you can just add a little bit of tension. Now it's shifting really good. And I think it's shifting too good. Yeah, I'm just gonna turn it in like a half a turn. These drivetrains are the easiest. So good. Love it. Bomb proof. 21 speeds. It's all anyone ever needs. Actually, what's that? 24 speeds. Whatever. Love it. Hard to improve on it. And then I believe this front one is, yeah, it's non, non indexing. So essentially, it's a friction front, which, as long as the low limit and high limit are set, if it's not throwing a chain, you're good to go. Spray some lube where it counts. One spot underneath. Spray a lube, a little bit of lube up the kickstand's butt. Take a 14 millimeter and just snug down the kickstand bolt. So this big Springer saddle super wide is just overkill for this bike. I think it's too much. Um, these are nice saddles to have on hand for when that conversation comes up. So, yeah, it's super heavy. I mean, that's a big boy saddle. But this one does about the same thing. It's just a little bit smaller. I think it's more appropriate for this bike. So I'm switching it. Oh, dropped a wrench. That was a good one. That was very loud and clanky. That saddle is pointing straight up into the heavens. Oh, Lordy. That looks pretty good. This bolt needs to be good and tight. That's German for good and tight. Getting towards the end of things here. Check my pedals, make sure they're tight. Oh, there we go. Check your crank bolts. So this bike I don't think has ever been tuned up before. I think this is its first tune-up. It's usually the second tune-up where I think, I think the second tune-up is where bikes really kind of settle into themselves. I'm gonna tighten the stem bolt down. Now these adjustable stems, this one's already way forward. Most people that buy these bikes wanna be upright. So I set it in the middle. Um, I learned to set it all the way up and one click down um, but I go in the middle and then I can tell my customers it'll come back if you want or it'll go down if you want. So I set that in the middle. Anytime you have like adjustability anywhere, I just go middle. That's my philosophy at least. You know, for most 
general casual cyclist, it's really hard to imagine um, adjustability or how the bike will feel one way or the other. And of course, you know, just a little test ride around the parking lot might give you a quick impression whether you're making a decision, but you don't ever know until you go on that first, you know, 10 mile bike ride. Put that up a little bit. I'm guessing here, you can do this on the ground and then you don't have to guess, guess my angles. These bikes ride so nice when you have them set up like this too. Hard to keep them in stock. This is a nice medium size. I'm gonna have to find a medium sized dad. I'm gonna lube the seat post cause I didn't do that. Actually, I'm gonna lube the seat tube. It's always a good idea to drop a little tri-flow in the mechanism here. I just kind of set it to a middle position. Okay. I'm satisfied with that seat angle. It looks like it's pointing up a little bit, but most of the time that's okay for these upright bikes. I'm definitely not okay with this um, stem angle. It's pointing straight up into the sky. I also don't like the kickstand length. Um, I hate to replace the kickstand, but kickstands are pretty cheap, so it's not the end of the world. But that bike's gonna fall over all the time. Like I said, I was guessing while it was in the stand. There is a gauge on the side. I could have been reading the gauge. But this kind of stuff is easier to do with the bike on the ground. You can stand over it. I see everything's straight, parallel, perpendicular, tight. Oh, maybe that kickstand's not so bad. That kickstand's not bad, bad at all, actually. And I see a little bit of rust in the bolts and the brake levers. There's some dust back here. This bike was hung up from its rear wheel and stayed that way for a long time. That's what that tells me. How do we feel about that bike, huh? Well, there you have it, bike farmers. My latest dad bike creation, a medium 7200. This bike is good for anyone, not just dads. So thanks so much for clicking in. If you like this content and want to see more, you got to support the channel. You know to click the like button, subscribe if you haven't. You can send me a super thanks. Five bucks goes a long way. Actually, right back there is a taco shop. Five bucks will get me a taco. If you've watched this far, that's good enough. We really like the watch hours. So thanks so much for clicking in and don't forget to click the notification bell so you and your bike can stay tuned.